Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you all? Hi, fabulous. Hey there. Hey, hey. This is Darnisha Siobhan. I think, are you on the phone right now? I am. Okay, but I'm going ahead and open up in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for your glory and your promises that are yea and amen towards us. We thank you, Father, that as we look into your word today, we seek and ask for illumination. We ask for enlightenment. We ask for your wisdom that will live big on the inside of us and teach us and show us and reveal unto us things that we did not previously know or weren't aware of in your word. We pray for every woman that is joining us and purposing to join us tonight. We pray, Father, that they will pull on the anointing that is on this call tonight that you may be magnified and glorified, that we will speak in wisdom, we will speak in love. And I thank you, Father, for the revelation knowledge that is already manifested and will continue to be manifested on every call that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Steve. Yo, welcome. Um, I wanted to... Um, say something before we kind of jumped into uh, our call for today. And there are some people that are strictly going to be on mute because the kids are going through ring circuits in the background, and that's okay. Um, I know that um, there will be um, another time for you to be able to contribute. And if you text me a question or something, I will um, shout it out on your behalf. I don't have a problem with doing that either. But um, I wanted to thank everybody on the call. And um, I wanted to repeat something that I heard on, I believe it was yesterday, and it may have been Wednesday because the week is kind of um, of meshed together for me. But my pastor said something that stuck out, and I wrote it down thinking about us. He said that the Bible is the living word. This is living word. And people can sit down and go cover to cover and not, or get anything that, you know, any revelation. They may read it like a fairy tale or a history book, or their heart could be closed to the words of Christ or or what the context of the Bible is, is speaking to them or the relevancy or anything like that to their lives. And there was something that he said. He said, you've got to sit down and have a conversation with this Bible a living word. There is an exchange. There is a sit down with a cup of tea and and mull over it and meditate it and and, and let it open up to you. It's going to speak back to you. It's going to jump and bear witness in your spirit. And I thought that that was really good because I think that that's what happens during our Bible study conference calls. There's all this living exchange just kind of bouncing off one another and that that iron is getting sharpened. And I think we walk away with just um, more value, like we walk away with some things added to us. And I just wanted to kind of put that out there, that even in your personal study time, like approaching it like you are having a conversation, you've got an appointed time with the word, with Jesus. And there's, you're going to get so much more. Some things are going to start opening up to you. And things that maybe you didn't understand, he's going to unfold. And I just um, wanted to kind of put that out there. I know last week um, we were digging into Matthew chapter 5. And I just wanted to be really clear because I know there was a question. I don't know if Martha's still on the line, but, um, if, she, if she's joining us today, but um, we were um, making sure that we were all kind of clear, and I wanted to recap and reiterate some things that we brought up last week, that the Father is not about deserting or abandoning us. We have free choice. We have free will. And he has, you know, he talks about choose me. Like, he, you have life and death before you choose life. He's even, like, kind of making it the easiest multiple choice ever. But there is no desertion. There is no abandon. And if you are 
born again, your spirit has been recreated. It's, it's, it, is, it is a new creation, but that soulish realm has to get renewed. And the thing is, there's going to be struggle. And the Lord does not kick you down a flight of steps. He does not throw you out. He works with you when your heart is, is, is toward him, when it's like, I made that mistake. He's not surprised by that mistake. He's not surprised by that choice. But you're still in the struggle. You're still wanting him. He's going to work with you. He's not going to abandon you. It's the people who are habitual and uh, in their ungodliness and making um, decisions against the word of God, the will of God, that's something different. That's when he's saying, I'll turn you over to that. And it's, I'm turning you over to what you want to do, your choice. And that, I just kind of wanted to make that distinction. I just kind of felt led to, to kind of go on that. I don't know if anyone else had anything they wanted to add to what I was saying or something, maybe they got something else. Okay, good. So let's just kind of move on, um, and hopefully everyone had a really good day. I got some text messages about, uh, you know, just we want to definitely cover people's strength today. Monday can be kind of hectic coming off a weekend, and so that's definitely going to be something that we'll lift up at the end of the call. But just kind of finishing up Chapter 5 and then going into Chapter 6, tell me was there anything that kind of stuck out to you that you wanted to discuss or you wanted to highlight? Well, this is Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Um, I wanted to discuss Chapter 5, Verse 31 and 32 concerning okay. divorce. Okay. Um, I know um, back in the day um, they were saying that they wanted the the man to write down a divorce decree to the woman, and the reason for that was um, so that the woman would be free to be able to marry again. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm I need some clarity on um, chapter thirty. I mean, yet yeah, verse thirty two. If you can explain that. Okay, so it says, and I'm reading out of NIV, so if someone has another version, um, it says, but I tell you, well, we'll start with verse 31. Jesus is, is, is um, speaking. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. So he's refuting that by saying, but I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, causes her to become an adulteress, and anyone who marries the divorced divorced woman commits adultery. So that marital unfaithfulness, basically um, the sexual immorality, that piece. So he's saying that if you, Jesus is saying if you, he's giving the parameters around godly divorce. Would you agree with that? Okay. Godly divorce? Um, yeah, or righteous divorce. Around what is acceptable to depart from your marriage other than death. Right. Okay, right. I'm sorry. That's probably the better way to say it. Sure, you want to cover it? Because you, you I, yeah, I feel right. the punch there. Go ahead, go ahead and hit it. In, in essence, the certificate was something that man created. That Right. It, it was part of a quote-unquote laws. God didn't have nothing to do with that. His mindset was, till death do us part, and if infidelity happens, this is the only reason that there should be a, se- a separation of the covenant that was made between you, him, and God. Um, you said verse 32 was giving you com- confusion? Yes, 30, um, 32. So... I understand 31, but 32, um, okay. because, you know, a lot of people in, in, um, in, in the Christian world gets divorced, and then they say that they're not supposed to marry again, and I just wanted to get some clarity on that. So I'm going to deal with first the verse, and then I'm going to deal with grace, okay? Okay. So first mm-hmm. the verse, it says, just in the context of what the verse is, if a man puts his wife away, divorces his wife, except on the grounds of sexual immorality, so she out there playing the field, um, if she's not out there playing the field and he's just putting her away because she nagged too much, she don't want his feet on the um, couch, 
pick up your shoes, uh, don't talk get to you. tired of her. Right. Anything outside of she's sleeping around on you, if he divorces her and he causes her to commit adultery if she goes and remarries because he put her away without just cause in God's eye, in God's sight. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. So if she goes and gets married or whoever marries her, who they're committing divorced, adultery. They're committing adultery, exactly. Now, with that said, this isn't under grace because Jesus ain't died yet. Okay? Right. So after Jesus died, there has to be a conversation with you and God on how this whatever situation comes about outside of sexual immorality, okay? I don't believe God is putting us in bondage if there is a situation of divorce when, you know, things do not happen the way we we have faith that they happen when we go into the covenant of marriage. Um, My marriage specifically, it did end because of sexual immorality. But with that said, I don't believe that somebody's getting hit upside their head is going to have to stay single for the rest of their life if they divorce their husband. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't believe that divorce is an unforgivable sin, as, as Darnisha had said at one point when we were studying Mark. I believe that we are under grace. You have to work that thing out and be at peace with God and know that without a shadow of a doubt that this is what God wants. And that's, that's what I believe. I believe we are under grace now. So, Cherry, can Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I have a question too. Go ahead, Deborah. No, go ahead. I'm I'm listening. No, no, no. You you ask your. Uh, this is your question. I was um um. I'm just saying. I I wasn't clear about if the man is supposed to marry again if his wife stepped out on him, but she answered that question. Okay. Right. Yeah, because Here. the distinction the the distinction says whoever marries her. Right, it's whoever marries her. See, they're, they're talking about it from the, the, the scripture context. It's talking about it from the standpoint of the man putting his wife away. Okay. But it still goes for the flip of it, too. It still, I believe it still goes for the flip because you know how sometimes they'll say he yeah. and she and it yeah. is her she? Yeah. I believe it still goes for her. But, again, we are under grace, so if the circumstances don't fit sexual immorality, you have to go and get with God on that, on that situation, because I don't believe it's an unforgivable sin. Yeah. Okay. And that, to me, it is a God said. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to resolve that that is yeah. what God told you to do. Yes. Because not what somebody are... else said, not what somebody else believed, not because ultimately when you you have to be accountable to God, period. Yes. And if the Lord did not tell you to do it or did, did not tell you to walk away in spite of whatever circumstances, you have to be released. And that's that's our life. That's yes. how we live yes. in everything yes. is a God. It, including yes. sexual including, immorality. Including yes. sexual immorality. That was going to be my next thing, including yes. sexual immorality. Because yep. you never know what the purpose of whatever happens. Yep. You may have to put that joker under grace. What's the what's my man name whose wife was a prostitute? Was out there hoeing around and Hosea. Yeah, yeah. yeah Hosea. That's how that's how that's how, that's how, that's how I remember him. Hosea. He married a hoe. Yeah. Hosea. His wife was out there acting a monkey and God kept telling him to go back and get yep. her, get her out the street. And mm-hmm. you know, he we don't necessarily see in the physical what's going on, but that's not for us to worry about. Mm-hmm. We just got to do what God tells us, mm-hmm. and we got to ask God to fix our heart, guard our heart, because you never know. Mm-hmm. You really never know. I'll bring that even to the um, bring that forward. Um, a friend of mine, her husband was acting raggedy to her out there doing like with Hosea wife, and you know she laughed and oh, but God told her to go back, and the reason she he told her to go back was because he needed. He needed, God needed her to show the love of God to him because he was about to be on his deathbed. And she had to take care of him, showing the love of God to bring him to Christ, despite mm-hmm. his foolishness before he left the earth. 
And again, it's all about souls. That's why so Sherry. Yep. I want you to I want you to balance that statement out with the flip side of it because people think that they supposed to stay in a marriage where there is abuse present or you understand what I'm saying? So can you go on to this is your lane. I want you to talk about that. Yeah. So again, we're under grace. You have got to seek God concerning your situation. So I will say this, specifically for my situation, whether he was out there being infidelity or not, there was emotional verbal abuse taking place. There was a lack of regard for my personal well-being. And in the spirit realm, I could feel this is coming to a head. I'm just waiting for you, God, to tell me whether I'm released or not. And that's why we have to, as women, in a relationship, whether you're married or not, if you're dating or you're married, you have to stay in tune with the word and with what God is saying. You have to be spirit-led in this situation because you could get easily caught up sidetracked um, with I'm pissed off, I'm mad, but if there is abuse, whether it's physical, emotional, they tearing you down, or they just don't give a darn about you, they're not taking care of the household as they should, that don't mean that God wants you to stay there and keep praying for his soul, that you need to hear from God, because sometimes it's time to go to on those, on those situations. But you've got to hear from God. And for me, in my spirit, I knew there was it was a pull. It, it, it's coming to a head because this right here is not healthy. It's not safe. You know, when you're having dreams about somebody wrapping their hands around your throat and choking you to death, there's, you know, what, you know, and I'll just, I'll just be candid. I, I had a, a dream like that where my husband came home in the house, I'm cooking dinner, and he wrapped his hands around my throat and started squeezing and I'm losing, losing air, and I remember taking the knife I was using to cut the food up to, to get him off of me, and I remember blood being everywhere, and I remember him just constantly clawing to squeeze my neck, and I woke up out of my sleep huffing and puffing. I remember the Holy Spirit said to me immediately, that's what he's doing figuratively to you, mm. choking the life out of you, mm. and I remember that vividly. And so God don't want us in them situations either because that quenches the spirit that you have and the energy you have to even hear from him. So, you know, balance is you got to stay in the word. You got to hear from God on your situation. He don't want us beat down women. He don't want us looking like what we going through. But to the same token, there may be a purpose and a call that he has on his life that you're the one that has to bring him to Christ to, to fully realize it. So the balance is you just got to stay with God. You got to stay focused on God. Sherry, that was really good, and I appreciate your transparency. And I will say something else to my, um, uh, to, to, to my, well, my sister's story. I don't, I'm losing my track of words. But she had everything she's saying is the truth. She had the heart to hear from God about somebody acting really ugly towards her. And her attitude was, Lord, I will stay in this marriage. I will love him despite the infidelity, but he, out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth spoke, and he tried to jump out and go, I want a divorce. And that was like Sherry's out in a way. Would you say that, Sherry? Well, I wouldn't even say that. I would say that God had already told me what he was going to say. Mm. And what I did was I went in into the situation after catching you being infidelity red-handed, and despite all of that, even knowing going in what he was going to say, I still said, I can't change what you did, but can't, do you want to fix this? And out of his mm-hmm. mouth, no, I want a divorce. And at that point I said, okay, I'm released. You don't get to yeah. make no more decisions from here, but I'm released. Because the word came from God, and then it was confirmed out of his mouth. That's true. And you know what's interesting? And I I love Sherry's example because, you know, yeah, it was a bad choice. And the Lord, she went through something and she was released from it. But the thing is, when Sherry got divorced, she went to a higher level in the things of God. And she got an even better house. She got 
Like he was out to see her destroyed, and the Lord blessed Sherry, and everything that he had his hand on ended up dying or fading away. It just was just crappy. Everything was crappy. And, you know, I just looked at how just as soon as that part happened, the Lord just continued to have his hand on Sherry's life and uphold her and stayed with her and blessed her, but he just, again, got turned over to that mess. Yeah. Um, Siobhan, That's if, what you I would, mm-hmm. if you wouldn't mind me taking three minutes to read uh, our girl MJ, Smith Wigglesworth. Go, go ahead with it. Oh, okay. yeah. It says, um, a winter of 1884 was very severe in Bradford, and plumbers were in high demand. As a result, a time of intense work began for Smith Wigglesworth that would last for the next two years. He became literally consumed by his natural occupation. His church attendance declined, and slowly but surely his fire for God began to grow cold. In the light of Polly, his wife's increasing faithfulness, Smith's black backsliding seemed all the more pronounced to the point that her diligence began to wear on him. Then one night, this came to a head when she came home from church. A little later than usual, Smith confronted her. I am the master of this house, and I am not going to have you coming home so late at an hour as this. Polly quietly replied, I know that you are my husband, but Christ is my master. At this, Smith forced her out the back door, then closed and locked it. Locked it. However, in his annoyance, he, for, he had forgotten to lock the front door, so Polly simply walked around the house and came through the main entrance laughing. Uh, when Smith finally saw what he had done, he caught her laughing and realized how silly he had been. Together they laughed about the matter, but Smith, but to Smith it was also a revelation of how cold he had grown in the things of God. Shortly afterward, he spent two days praying and fasting and, pr- and repentance, and God gloriously restored him. Um, we've heard two versions of the story, but the other version was that she was left outdoor, outside all night and unlocked the door the next morning, and she made breakfast. So the point is you have to hear from God, whether it's a Sherry situation or a Polly situation. You have to hear from God. And that's that's the bottom line. So So let me throw a curveball in here. And I think this probably deals with even going further down into – 33, and it may deal with stuff like um, honoring that person in your home that is your husband. So, ladies, what happens, like, give me some feedback on what you think when your husband isn't exactly where he should be at in Christ. And the Bible does say, you know, you can sanctify him by you, you know, you cover him by you being in Christ. But what happens when that situation happens and you're, you know, like a poly situation, he's like, I'm the the head of the household. I don't want you to go to church today. You know, where where, where, where you go with that? Where you go with that, ladies? Just just throwing it out there. I think it's religion. I mean, even how Smith responded or came at her was, um, it was a, it was a perversion of the word. And I think that, you know what I mean? And so, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times they say, oh, yeah, he's the head, he's the master, so I have to submit. And and it it, it does tie into what, um, you know, what Jesus says or Ma- Matthew says that according – that Jesus said according to Matthew later in the scripture because, um, you know, it says about in verse 39, smite the cheek and turn him the other also. And – you know, this is not about, you, you still have to use wisdom, and we're not, you know, God is not requiring us to be passive wives or Christians, you know, and uh, we just have to know and, and also just continue to be yielded, but you have to be able to discern when the word is being perverted, just like yep. Jesus, when Satan tempted Jesus, that was a perversion of the word. And he did not respond to that, and he did not yield to that. Hello. Hi, this is, this is Denise, um, Darnisha's friend. Um, in First Corinthians seven eleven, 
um, when I was going through a separation with my husband and I came upon that, um, I realized that that was the decision for me because it talks about if a woman is with a man and he's never to be a believer, it's okay for her to leave but never to remarry, um, and vice versa. If, if a man is wanting to leave but his wife is going to be a believer, he's supposed to stay with her because, you know, he could maybe help her become a, a deeper Christian. Um, I'm just paraphrasing what it says, but that was a turning point for me was that I knew that I wasn't giving everything that I had to the Lord. I was focusing more on me, myself, and I and, and the struggles I was going through in my relationship and that he wasn't honoring God as well, and nor did he believe in God at the time. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Mm-hmm. So let me, Denise, can I ask I you a question, it. Denise? Yeah, it. can I ask you a question, Denise? In your situation sure. where you were focusing completely on you, did you, when you finally got your eyes shifted off of you, I'm assuming you were still married, did you recognize that even though he might not have been where he should have been in God, that didn't mean he didn't want to be with you? Because that's what, that's what part of Corinthians is talking about. Yeah. Well, I knew he was never, we had been married 23 years, and he had never really gone to church, and nor did he believe, but he didn't want me to leave the church either. Um, I was Catholic at the time, and now I'm not. I am um, go to church with Darnisha, but um, it's kind of a long story. But I knew that I was never going to be able to glorify God in the way that I wanted to glorify him or the way he wanted me to glorify him if I stayed in my marriage and in my relationship. Now, that's just Paul's account of a divorce. That's just Paul's opinion of it. I mean, um, Mm -hmm. you know, the Holy Spirit may have inspired those words or whatever, but that was just his his opinion. But it it was like a revelation to me that I knew that if I were to stay in that marriage, either A, I was going to never get to know the Lord the way I wanted to get to know the Lord, or B, just you know, die in that situation. I mean, I was literally, my soul was literally dying. I was starving for God, and I was never allowed to go there. So uh, that was the deciding factor for me when I read that. Oh. And so and now that's, a, that's of, what God said to me. You get what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And it's a very yeah. specific. Yeah. Yeah, that was a specific situation that Mm -hmm. you had to stay focused on the word of God and Mm -hmm. operate in God's wisdom. Now, I'm going to tie this in because I know there's some single people who might be on the line too. Before you even get to the marriage point, you have got to be in tune, walk step hand in hand with God because people do put up airs and people do put up fakeness and they put up screens and they present themselves in one way and they do X, Y, Z. But you, if you stay focused on God, God will reveal everything that you need, everything that you need to know about them. The other thing that I also have heard and I've read this and I know about this in my heart, when a person wants to take you away from who you are and what you are and what you are about and when you're telling them out of your mouth who you are and what you're about and they're ignoring it, If it doesn't align with the word of God, that's not for you. Whoever is for you is going to align with the word of God. It is. And then I think my mom put out there on Facebook today, he's going to love God more than you. Because women, we're supposed to link up and help push a man who's linked up and has a vision from God. That's what we're supposed to do. So we have to stay linked to the word to be able to hear, too, concerning who is being placed before us and presenting whether or not they Boaz or not. As, as Jensen Franklin said, you want the whole Boaz, not just the A-Z part of it. <laughs> and, and ass. Right. You don't want Sorry, just the ass. To, there was no way around it. But that's, mm-hmm. that's, it's so particular. Now, I'm, I'm a person who is about accountability. I made a bad decision. No doubt. But even in that, it grew me up to a different level even in Christ because I even had to break some stuff on me concerning forgiveness, concerning patience, even the more. And I know that God never intends us to go through things, but he definitely can take the things we go through and turn it around for our good. You know what I mean? All things work together for our good. And so I just – I know that whoever's single online, it's just a reminder that 
whether we married or single, and this happens even in our relationships with women. We got to be lockstep knowing that this person is lined up with God's purpose driving me forward. If the people you associate with ain't going in the direction that you want to go with, you might need to think about, I might need to change my association. Because if they're help, not helping you launch, they're pulling you down. Because somebody's going to go to somebody's side. Either they're going to go the good way and the other person's going the bad way. They'll well, pull you to the to bad, bad way or you, just, they'll pull you to the good way. And then you know what? It don't even have to be good or bad. It could just be if God has things that he has placed on the inside of you that you know you have to birth out, and it's big things, and it's things that's pushing the kingdom of God and pushing you and elevating you a certain way, your posse got to be aligned with that. Your posse include your husband <laughs> and your girlfriends, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So your posse has to be aligned with that. And if they're not, they're not move you're not you're not gonna move forward as quickly. I'm not gonna say you don't completely stop, but you're not gonna move forward as quickly as, as, as God might have intended you to. Living witness. It's true. And I I I just it's separation. And and the God God is even making more distinctions about our relationships and male, female, female to female and male to all of it. All of it. And it is it is, you know, surrounding yourself with people that are adding value to your life mm-hmm. and vice versa, period. In the in the things of God. And, you know, even I take Siobhan and I relationship, even my godmother, it's like there's an accountability like Sherry said, and sometimes it's not pleasant conversations, but they're real and they're they're in line with the word of God. And I, I can never dispute what God's word says. And I, I count on, you know, my circle of friends to hold me accountable to the word, period. Sorry. Excellent. And that's the best thing in the world. Mm-hmm. And that ties into verse 37 about your yays being yays and your nays being nays. <laughs> but bring it on. Bring that on up. <laughs> Don't be a liar and keep your word. Ooh. Oh. I'm going to even add to that. I'm going to say it like this. Stop being wishy-washy. Stop being a schizophrenic. Either you in or you out. It is either yes or it is not as no. It's not no ring around the rosy. This is it. And, you know, we as women, we got to be definitive in what we decide. Have confidence in Christ and move forward and be definitive in it. You know, I have learned that no is holy. In is holy. <laughs> and, you know, we've got to be firm and confident in that. Like, it's just, it's just cool to be like, I know that I am a person of my word. I believe that what comes out of my mouth and my actions that follow it determine everything that's going to happen from there on out between me and a, a person. So if my yes is yes and I'm set green to do something, I'm a person that's going to be a person of my word. And if it's no, I'm not going to feel bad later that I said no. I'm going to just be like, this, this is it. <laughs> no. Hey, what part of the N and the O you didn't understand, as Siobhan would say. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to miss, miss words, and I like straightforwardness. Um, I get it. Some things, I, I just don't think, just be quiet then. You know what I mean? If not, cut right to the case. Like I had to tell somebody yesterday. Sorry, I will not be attending. That's it. No, I'm not going. And it was a lot of him and hauling. Nope. Thank you. And that's it. I, I, kind of like what we were listening to, you have to discern the demand of something. Because mm-hmm. something can turn into a distraction. Mm-hmm. Something can come to derail and take you down a trail, and I don't have time for that. You have mm-hmm. to know. I, I, that's just being on purpose, too. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I, uh, my friend Kim and I, we call it, um, you know, flaky sheep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Granola. Yeah. Flaky sheep. 
No. Do you no know flaky. how many connotations that has? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Let's, let's just look at that visually. <laughs> now, see, see, bring us wool, you know, they, they, you know, nice clothes have come out of sheep. When well, you get the, the, the big burly part off, and you get to, like, the skin part, which is, like, the core of it. So the core of a person is flaky. Oh, that's, that's good. I'm sure <laughs> that's <a> good. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, think about it, though. Like, we don't see the under part of a sheep until after the wool is shaved off. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so to their core, it's flaky. Not the outside, it's the core of them. The heart of them is flaky. Mm-hmm. So I got you. I, I want to, you know what, and that just kind of running straight through um, Chapter 5 where it talks about like the eye for eye. I think a lot of times people gather a false perception that Jesus was passive or a doormat or this Millie Mouse man who, who oh, slap my one cheek and you can have the other cheek. Slap, like, you know, and I think that, when I read through this, even in regards to all the things that we've been talking about, you know, I wrote down in the margin of my Bible that, you know, he's still dealing with um, not just love, but that, that using wisdom, if I could say it that way, with not having a revengeful spirit about you. You know what I mean? Like not um, – um, entering into a challenge with another person, like, I got to get the last word. You ain't going to do that to me. I'm going to get you, you know. And you know that's us when we've been wronged or we felt like we've been slighted by somebody. And I personally can't stand when someone thinks they got one over on me, and I'm like, I see you. Like, I see you with all my eyes, and I am. I, I just can't stand it. But you have to swallow the pride associated with feeling like you got to avenge yourself. And, you know, the Word of God says in 1 Corinthians um, 13 that love, you know, bears patiently, you know. It bears all things with patience. Um, there's an endurance. There's a I, – I saw how my daughter just handled that situation, and I'm going to count that to a treasure in heaven or whatever it is to her account that she did not retaliate that she's going to allow me to protect her and to, um, this, the Lord says, vengeance is mine. And that's how I look at it when it says, you know, offer your other cheek. Or, you know, I've heat, I was talking today with Darnesia about, you know, I heat hot coals on top of somebody's head who wants to do me wrong, talk about me behind my back. When I do something, they ain't never, hey, let me write you a check and sow seed into your life. Now, run and tell that. How about that one? Or oh, you know, so I do a what? I do an <laughs> act of love instead of you know I'm going to be a gossip or a whisperer and I try to tear you down on top of it. And there's this challenge and debate coming. No, devil, you're not getting any ground in this area. You know, Siobhan, it takes a stronger person to not get the other person back. You know what I mean? It's a stronger spirit, a stronger character than to retaliate. Because retaliating is easy. You, we, we wrap in flesh. The flesh always want to please itself. The flesh want to always be bigger and badder. But it takes a stronger person with a bigger character of love to do the opposite of the norm. So... People and I think I think that's why he ends because I, I mean this the other question I have with chapter five is the last verse where he says be perfect mm. as I am mm. and so it says be perfect and so I hear a lot of people say, oh we we're not perfect we can't you know we can't be perfect because only God is perfect but he's telling us that. There is that the that is in us to be to respond like he would respond. Mm-hmm. And I you think you don't have to go if, all day sinning no. and offended. You don't have yeah. to do that all day, no. every day. You can you cannot sin today, folks. 
Yeah. We cannot be offended today. How about that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's in us. <laughs> it's in us not to or, do that. That's good. Um, or you can be offended, Hello? but don't sin. You can be offended, but don't sin. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Be and, you can, and you can confront evil without yeah. personal revengeance. Right. Come on now. What are the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, yeah. gentleness, and self-control. Who's saying that? Denise. Hi. Mom. Mom is Denise. Hi, Hi. Denise. Hello. You know what? And I looked at all of that over the years, and I said, I still got to die daily. Because I feel like if somebody do me wrong, that's it. You got yeah, one try, and I ain't gonna fool with you no more. You know, I I will love you, <laughs> but I ain't gonna you. fool with you no more. <laughs> and but what I if, will what if help I... you, but I ain't gonna fool <laughs> with you no more. <laughs> I, you know, that over the years, I've had to learn that I've got to die daily, but I ain't gonna fool with you no more. Can I get the scripture on the I ain't going to fool with you no more? Where's that scripture? I ain't going to do it. I'm, I'm looking. I'm going to love you, but I'm not going to call you, and I ain't going to be grinning and chinning at you. Wow. That's, that, that's just the attitude that I've taken with some of these people that, to me, appear to be cray-cray. <laughs> oh. But you know something? I think a lot of us struggle with forgiveness and walking in love, especially when we've been offended and someone's done us wrong and we know we haven't done anything to deserve it because we don't understand what forgiveness is not. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness don't say you got to be buddy-buddy with them again. It doesn't say that. It says you have to be in your heart. You have forgiven them and released them. Okay, what if it's a person that's in your life and they're in your life for good and you can't oh, really just dismiss story. them, and they still de- doing you wrong, and you still accepting it. And how do you, how do you deal with that? Why are you accepting? And, and it? I've had hey. I've had to learn that because I'm almost 40 years married, and I look at, you know what? That's small stuff. Life goes on, and I'm not gonna let myself get caught up in that, you know. And at the end of the day. I still got to love you. So I just let all that little small stuff go out the window. I mean, it'd be some petty stuff, and Mm -hmm. you'd be just angry about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it, early in my marriage, that bothered me. Well, I look back on that, I said, hey, I got over that. But that's like a growth in Christ. You've had to get into the Word. You've had to know Christ some more. When you grow in the things of God, it helps you to be um, a bigger person about between the spouse and you, you know. But I mean, it's but, I, I, you, but I do hey, believe that if that, I don't live with you, I don't want to be bothered with you. <laughs> I still love you, Ma- Mama Stanley. Mama Stanley. I'm, I'm best. I I'm, no, I'm with you. That. I feel you. I feel you. But I believe that, as you said, over time in your marriage, the fruit of the Spirit has been made manifest in your marriage. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. And that's the person you got to live with. you got to work that out with God. What, what, what the she's saying, that Danisha. Don't... Right. Them other That's the part that you don't have to live with. I can love you, but I don't have to be bothered with you. Well, where that, is that, that, that in the scripture? It's not. <laughs> I'm saying that's a growth for me. I have to deal with. No, but and, where is it in and the I'm sorry, the but when I look at people, and you know what? I've learned that people want you to to to. Put them on the straight and narrow, if I could say it like that. Mm. Uh, no, we're not going down that road. You know, and next you know, oh, here they go again. I just love you. You know what they not just tell you off, you know? <laughs> no, you know what? They, want, they wanted me to actually put them on the straight and narrow, you know. And I'm thinking, mm. I wouldn't have wanted that. But, 
but you just, I ran into a lot of people that are like that. I mean, you'll be surprised what makes people happy or You mean provoking. Yes. Well, that's what I think. You're talking about people that's just provoking you, Mama Glenda, right? Well, I No, not necessarily. No. No, what I'm saying is the person, the person, you, the person that's yawing at you and when you confront them with that, it seems like they're okay, but you know, you're somewhere down the road like that. And they keep coming back. Oh, but I like you. I don't want you to leave me. And you're thinking, goodbye, you know. But I don't know. Somehow, whatever um, flow or your spirit that you're carrying about. Now, for me, I'm not carrying an angry spirit when I, when I let you know in love. Now, nah, you cut that out. You ain't going that way. And they okay. You know what it is, Mom? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what it is. I hear what you're saying. I know both sides of some of the things that you do, and I know what you're saying. When you are um, bringing correction to somebody, there is still love in it. People have love for you, and they admire you, even when they're vexing and annoying and they're crazy, and they oh. receive it out of respect for who you are, and that's why they keep coming back wanting to kind of be under you. But the other piece where somebody wants to be ungodly about or pushy about how they want to, um, um, you know, be, uh, 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 I guess maybe operating in witchcraft or whatever, that's something different where you done tighten them up and then you telling them, I don't want to be dealing with you anymore. That's the part right there that mm-hmm. I say, okay, it, you, you, I get it. There's forgiveness. You still walk in love, but I, I don't know. I just there are some things that we've had this conversation about. You have to be able to discern the situation. Everything is not a retaliation or revenge or got to get the last word to get somebody told. Some things you got to let the Lord fight that battle, and you and you go, okay, I'm not going to engage. If I can walk away, I will. You don't always walk away. <laughs> I I will say this. Um, you were asking where does it say in the Bible not to deal with them. Well, where does it say in the Bible that you do have to deal with them? If a person no, has- you need to see. You still need to see people the way the Lord sees them. There's still a soul that's present there. We can't be just chopping people up and throwing them out the door. I'm not saying chop them up because part of forgiveness and walking in love is you can still love from a distance and pray for them. You sure can. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you have to deal with them on a regular either. You ain't got to be buddy buddy with them, call to see how they do. She's she talking about that? church family, Sherry. She's well, I uh, can I can I, <laughs> can I make a distinction because there are mm-hmm. there are family members that I just don't deal with. Uh, on, I know. Tell me about you it. You know, I, it's I not agree. that I don't love them, and I I okay. don't. You know, ex, you know, share the love of Christ with them. It, it's not nasty. It's not. But unless the Lord tells me, and and my God, Mom, you know, we talk about this often. There, if someone is just, you know, tearing you down every time you're with them, and mm-hmm. and they're not. Again, to me, it's just iron shopping and iron. All I owe you is to love you. Right. I don't owe you a relationship. I don't owe you anything else. But I owe you to love you, and I owe you to have a love response toward you. A love response. Mm-hmm. Yes, a love response. That'll, you don't have to. I mean, you have to bring them all up underneath, all in your home and stuff. I get that. Exactly. There's still a response. It goes back to exactly what I said. You have to be in step with the word of God and hearing discernment of the Holy Spirit of who is supposed to be in your body, in your sphere, connected to you. Because ain't mm-hmm. everybody ain't for you, and can't everybody be connected to you? Mm. Not in that sense. So, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Blue. Darnisha, thank you for h- helping me bring that out. I do need to work on that. And um, I think this, this here uh, conference kind of helped do that too. We mm-hmm. we always need like a little one on one to kind of boost us up. So mm-hmm. we're reminded of the scriptures, and and this is helpful because we're doing um, the verse by verse, and I like mm-hmm. that. 
Mm-hmm. Amen. So well, that, that, that is good oh. word, along with Sherry and Siobhan and, and uh, Denise. Those, those are good. Deborah. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Let me and Deborah, I think... You- do you have your questions answered? <laughs> yes, I have, all the way around. <laughs> oh, we we jumped all well, on that to the you leg, leg on that trip. Well, Nelson, we, Nelson Mandela, one of my favorite quotes from Nelson Mandela is, is when you stay angry at somebody, it's like drinking your own poison and expecting it to kill your enemy. Come on now. Yeah, that's good. That's right. Come on. It's a waste of energy to do that because they ain't even thinking about you. (laughs) Sean Wayne still went down the road and he's still over there suing and something. Come on. Lord Jesus. Um, Sherry, I know you said that you had just landed. I'm sorry. You you got like fire shut up in your bones, so you're going to close us out in prayer today. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, The other Debbie was sick. I don't know if she's on the line. Um, but I'll pray for her healing. Any anybody, any he all healing. I know some people dealing with cough. I know I would. Can you specifically, Sherry? Can you cover um, baby Joseph? I don't know if Candace is on the line right now, but her baby has been in and out of the hospital with um, gastrointestinal issues, and he's a little newborn. Mm-hmm. And um, we just want to cover Joseph and um, all of our strengths, but specifically Regina. She's over there. Uh, kind of juggling the three boys and a Monday and the job, and she's just like, ah. So I don't know if she was able to get on the line, but I, I wanted to cover her strength and just that she has a rest. She's able to kind of come down and rest this evening. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, Tammy, um, she's not on the call, but I spoke at length a couple hours the other day with her. You guys haven't heard from her in a while. She was calling from the West Coast. And the time frame was a little odd for her, but her marriage, I just want to insert that, like just keep covering her marriage, please. Got it. Thank you. All right, well, God, Lord, we just thank you for this day, this conference call, bringing us sisters together to be able to fellowship, to be able to discern the word of God within the context of the word of God by the right to divine and through the Holy Spirit. Lord, we just thank and praise you for each household that's represented on the line. Protect us. Cover us in the blood. Let us be examples of Christ's character. That's why we're going through the word, so we can continue to pour this word on the inside of us so we can get used to responding as Christ would. God, you're revealing who you are to us through study on this call. So, Lord, I just thank you that we're growing up in you on another level. We're seeking you the more, and you're revealing you the more to us because our hearts and our spirits are ready and open for that. God, I just thank you right now for each lady on the line, that we're here from the tops of our heads to the soles of our feet, that every tissue, every cell, every organ, every system functions as you designed them to. God, I speak life and energy into Regina's body, God. I speak life and energy and strength into my body, God. Uh, We know that there is a lot being pressed on us and pulled in different directions, mother, wife, worker, caretaker, Whatever it is, God, we just ask that you continue to build us up and strengthen us. We exchange our strength for your strength, God. Lord, I just thank you right now that even Debbie is healed of the illness that was going on in her body, God. I speak life to baby Joseph's body in the name of Jesus, God. Whatever's going on in his gastrointestinal system, God, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and we say that he, his body functions at his design. Likewise, I pray for Michelle's baby girl in the name of Jesus. She may be in a hurry to get out, but God, you will hold that baby in a little longer, God, so that she's completely formed and, and ready to go, God. I just thank you right now for marriages and relationships, God. You divine, you just set up and divinely set marriage in order. So, God, we are seeking your wisdom when we have situations in our marriage. We're going to dial us back the Darnisha attitude, the Sherry kind of way, the that's just who I am. And we're going to exchange that for Christ's character and look through the lens of Christ at the situation and seek your wisdom on it. Lord, we want to walk in love always, even with our sisters, God. We want to walk in love. We want to see them as you see them, God. And we want to answer in a love response. Do you know how much faith gets built up, God, when we respond the way you would have us to respond? 
Woo! I see the mansions and heavens and the diamonds and the pearls and the streets of gold coming our way because we're seeking after you. Our spirits are pulled towards you, God. So likewise, God, I just pray for your wisdom in making decisions. There are decisions. There are things that you have placed in our hearts. There are miracles that need to be burst up out of us and that are going before us to be a blessing, a blessing for our future. And so, God, I just Speak into existence that whatever you're calling us to, whatever you place on the inside of us, talents and anointing, you're going to pull it out of us, God. You're going to get us around the right people, the right environment, so that success and miracles go forth. You're going to discern and help us to discern who should be in our lives, who should be in our posse, who shouldn't be. And you're going to help us to continue to just keep focused on you. And so, Lord, as we leave off this call, God, we don't leave you. We just continue to keep fasting and praying and keeping our mind stayed on you, God, so that when we reconvene, the same anointing goes forth, and we continue to keep digging in yeah. in you and building up our faith in you. So we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Amen. ladies. Have a wonderful week. Blessings. Amen. Bye-bye, okay. ladies. Okay.